Can y'all hear me? How about now? I'm going to be lazy and sit down. All right. It's good to see everybody tonight in their short sleeves. No, no long sleeves, no bundled up in a parka. Well, I do. I don't have no sense on Okay, I better stop. Me and Neil going to get in trouble. Or I'm going to get in trouble. Neil's just going to be guilty with me. All right. We better, we better open this up and get going. How y'all doing this evening? Good. All right. Let's get started on some prayer requests. Yes, ma'am. Teresa Williams, Teresa Walden's brother, Richard Williams, still in ICU in a diabetic home. Richard Williams? Williams. Teresa Walden. Okay, that's where I got messed up. Sorry. Okay. Teresa's brother's in the hospital. Uh, with a diabetic coma. Miss Etta. Yes, ma'am. Miss Logan is uh, having a biopsy tomorrow in Dallas. She's back there in the nursery right now taking care of the kiddos, so you'll keep her on your list. Okay. Miss Robbie? She, she had surgery today on one leg and having surgery again tomorrow on the other leg. Miss Sherry. I've got a Good thing in a in a prayer thing too, so yeah. that's good. Also, uh, my right leg, uh, my nose has been going up for three months, but when they pulled the drain tube, it had been in just a hair too long, and so it's still doing some seeping and stuff. But we've got this time it should be able to be just cleared up with antibiotics and we'll be massaging it to get it to drain. That's the dog bite. Good deal. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Miss Anna. Yes, ma'am. He took a pretty hard fall last what? yesterday evening. Last night. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Mr. Everett. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Chris. Uh, Joel or Lana Johnson said Joel's uncle Reuben is in hospice, but it's in good spirits. My uncle Eugene is also on hospice and not doing well. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, we got praise sitting up yonder. The hill's with us tonight. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. Chris, Bruce, surgery this coming Monday or like? Okay. Troy, you're exactly right. Not to take away from what Troy said, but Mr. DL being here is uh, that's pretty awesome. Yes, sir, Mr. Eric. Amen. That's awesome. God's doing what God does. That's right. I got a co-worker that found out today his daddy, they found a mass in, in him and they're, they're going and take it out. Are they still in Dallas? Are they having to go back and forth? Yes, ma'am. Me. I got a friend in Arkansas when I play guitar for the year, Bruce Smith. Yes, sir. He got sick last week, went to the hospital. He got stage four pancreatic cancer and spread all over his body. So pray for him. Yes, sir. Monsieur? We need to pray for this land around here. There's been a lot of crop damage. There's been a lot of loss of livestock. Uh, and a lot of people have had a hard time recovering. And it's going to be a long process. And uh, for some people, that's their livelihood. Yes, ma'am. It's, uh, it's definitely been a, it, It's been different. It's been interesting to, to 
to witness some of this. Johnny. Your cousin? Is that what you said? Yes. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay. Johnny's got a cousin that's having surgery. Is there somebody else? Mr. Bye. You know, in pulled muscles, sometimes a pulled muscle is worse than something being broke. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, Miss Ed. I'd like to ask for prayer for my brother, uh, Lee Gibson. He has, uh, he's bleeding internally, and he also found out that he's a diabetic. And I'd like for prayer for my great niece, Taylor Bridge. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, last week I asked mm. for prayers because I had one granddaughter that was going to have a baby. She has her baby on Saturday, and then the, my other granddaughter is supposed to have her baby sometime this week. So, you know, pray for that to be a good delivery. So we'll agree too. Yes, ma'am. Miss Ann's got some, some great grandchildren on the way. So you get to do like some extra spoiling on those? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. Well, we come to you tonight grateful. Grateful for the opportunity to gather up and to worship, Lord, and just just praise you Lord just like your word says we're, we're, we're coming to you and, and we're asking Lord and you know when we just we've got a lot of folks that Lord we got a lot of folks that are hurting we got a lot of folks that are in pain we got a lot of folks that are sick Lord from the top of this list to the bottom of this list Lord from cancer to the situation that our country and our world is in Lord to COVID Lord, we, we know that you are the ultimate healer. Lord, whether that's, whether that's illness, physical, spiritual. Lord, and we know that, Lord, we know that the closer we get to you, the, the harder that whole devil tries to just slide in there and just push us out of the way. And Lord, we just ask that you bind that devil up and you, you get that son of a gun out of here. Lord, he ain't no good for nothing. Lord, I ask that you be with the leaders of our country. Lord, I ask that you be with our doctors, their staff, as they go through and they're, Lord, they're fighting this battle just, just the same as we are. We're all fighting this battle for a cure, for an end. Lord, and I thank you. 
I thank you that you give us the opportunity to stand up. Lord, stand up and, and be strong. And to, Lord, and proclaim that you, you are the ultimate healer. Lord, we can't do this on our own, and we know that we got to have you. Lord, just like your word says in, in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Lord, we, we trust you, and we depend on you. Lord, whatever it is that you want us to do, Lord, whatever it is that we need to do, Lord, I just ask that you give us the strength and the courage to stand up and to do it. Lord, not as men and women, but as Christians, Lord, as followers of you, Lord. Lord, thank you for everything that you do for us. Lord, thank you for not walking away from us. Lord, I just ask that you, you, you keep us safe and you keep us going. Lord, forgive us where we fail you, and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We're going to get started with some worship, so I pray that, I don't know, my heart was just touched through all that and just seeing the, the prayer and the people being lifted up, it just really touches my heart. And if you need to be lifted up, just grab somebody and ask them to lift, help help you, you know, lift up your, your life to the Lord, so y'all just join us in worship. You can't hear me? Sorry. Letting go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. Try to win this war, I your rest mighty warrior king of the fire no matter what I face you're by my side when you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move when you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you I will trust I will trust I will trust Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things, be my life and breath. I want what you want more than nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher. Your plans are always good. That's not a place where I'll go. You've not When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 I will trust. In you. I will trust in you.
that, that flow like a river.
strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then about five more of those and pray out. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Thank you, Tom. Well, I was... <laughs> it was fun. It's, it's fun being in your father's house. Amen. You know, I, I was... Uh, I got tickled while we were, uh, while we were singing. You know, I like to... You know, I like to pick on Neil. And I uh, looked down there on the... On that uh, on that subwoofer, I looked down there and and I didn't see his three pair. And uh, he said, "My what?" I said, "Your three pair. That's a big old cup of that's a big old cup of coke right there." And, and uh, my pastor always called those a three pair. And I said, "I don't see your your." He goes, "It's right over there on the chair." And uh, he and then he popped off real quick after that. And no, I don't need a sip. <laughs> And I got to thinking about what he said because it was about, I don't know, about two months ago maybe. He had it down there, and they had been practicing and practicing, and he just looked like he was parched. So I got it, and I brought it over to him. I held it up to his mouth, and he goes, no, I kept holding it there, and he shook his head no, and he's trying to play and practice, and finally he just leaned over and got him a sip. And, <laughs> and his face turned red all the way out of his ears, down his, his head turned red. So now he's quick to tell me. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> I, I, I was just trying to help a brother out. You know, he looked like he was working hard. <laughs> and, uh, but boy, I tell you what, I, it's, it's fun. It is fun to have, uh, have fun in church. And we're going to be uh, you know, in our round pen. You, you can leave it right there for a little bit. Well, I got to thinking about that, and I got to laughing. I couldn't even worship, but for, uh, <laughs> for, for laughing. But uh, I know he'll... Pay me back later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to get mine in while I can. Oh, man. Man, that's good stuff. You know, uh, we've, been in, uh, we've been in Philippians chapter 3, and uh, we start off in, in 1. I don't think we were there very long with the 2. We've been in 3 for a few weeks. And, and uh, you know, I got to, I got to, uh, you know, to thinking about this, and all these different stories and things were coming to mind as, as we got ready to uh, got ready to, to finish up that last song and was getting ready to come up and and I got to thinking about you know just like Paul was Paul you know Paul his letter to the Philippians he was talking about how it, he he had his priorities and he had them all lined out and he had the things that he felt like were his highest priorities and and y'all remember the story when when you know when we were going through that now, obeying the law every letter of the law you know was a big priority for him that he he did his best to to, to do all of these things that he thought were, were, were important to him. And, uh, and you know, and you, you think about that. It's important to you until you come to the point where it ain't important no more. That's right. And uh, all those things that we thought were so important. And, yeah, and I got to thinking, you know, I thought I, thought, uh, I, thought I was going to love uh, life as a, as a, as a, a, a single dad a- until I was one. <laughs> and, then, and then it wasn't so fun anymore. And, uh, gosh, it's hard to believe, you know, that was, what, 28 years ago, and, and God blessed me with, with the love of my life and, and my best friend, and, and uh, she's back there helping with the youth. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you just think, you know, you think you got it, you think you got it the way you want it until God shows you something different, and then, and then we make a change. Uh, 
another another one that came to my remembrance. Uh, I called and checked on Clint today. So Clint's been feeding out a couple of hogs, and uh, he'd been pouring a feed to him. He'd been mixing. He'd been mixing sweet feed, dog food. He'd been mixing all, just pouring it to him, putting that weight on him. Cracked corn, man. He just pouring it on him. And uh, and and uh, I, when it's my turn to feed, I'll go and he'll say, man, I want. You, and there's just two of them. I want you to fill this five gallon bucket up. I want you. Here's the here's the mixture I want. You got it. And uh, and I I do it. And uh, well, he 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 borrowed a, a trailer today from a buddy of his, and he has show pigs. So his show pigs, apparently, uh, the way this trailer is, it's uh, <laughs> it's the angle of the it's the angle of the of the gate when you drop it down, the angle of the ramp. Well, his show pigs, and they travel all over showing. They got no trouble getting their getting themselves up that up that uh, up that ramp. Well, apparently he got one. He done poured so much feed to that 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 big old belly it can't get up the ramp. Uh, he's well over 300 pounds now, and uh, one of them he had no trouble. So uh, it was so important. He had a he had a scheduled time to be in Carthage at the processor today at Panola County is where we get all ours done, and and uh, and, and uh, so <laughs> so I called him to check on him. It was so important that he got both of these loaded yesterday night so that he could get get those up where they're supposed to be today. And, uh, and when I called him, I said, man, how's it going? He said, he was wore smooth out. He said, it ain't going. No good at all. It ain't going worth a flip. And he explained to me about the one trouble he was having with the one hog. And I said, man, you need some help. He goes, I don't know if you want to help or not. He said, here's what I did. He said, man, I couldn't get that sucker buster up the ramp. His belly was dragging. He's fat. He, 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 he can't get up. He said, so? He said, man, I tried to throw a rope on that song gun, get him right behind the jaws. That didn't work. He said, man, I went through all this, and he went through the whole day. He said, plus, he goes, man, the way they've been in there for a while, we had all that rain, we had all that snow, you know. <laughs> it was bad enough that, you know, that you got hogs in this hog pen uh, messing and making a mess. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And, uh, and now it's a foot deep. But then you got all this saturation on top of it, so he's sure enough sloshing around. It's 300 pounds. He can't get it by himself. He done resorted to a ratchet strap. He said he got a ratchet strap. He got it on him, got it on one leg. Man, he just went through all of it. Had a ratchet strap pulled through. I'm ratcheting that son of a gun. I done reached through and hooked it. I done got the truck in the yard, tore the yard up, hooked the strap to the front of the truck. I'm trying to drag this son of a gun up there, and I'd be doggone if he didn't wiggle his way out of that. After all of that, he said, my forearms, he said, I can't even grip. Way I heard it. I can't even grip a cup of coffee. I can't grip a, I can't do nothing. Forearms are burnt, spent. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can. Keep from laughing. And uh, cause I'm picturing all this in my mind. He said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I said, where are you at now? I'm inside. I'm done. I'm through with that. So everything that was so important to him, man, I gotta have these. It's important that I get them in that trailer by this certain time so I can get them to the processing plant by this certain time to, you know what? It ain't important no more. <laughs> I'm done. I said, brother, I can't believe you didn't walk out there with a 45 and put one in the base of the skull <laughs> and just pay the extra fee. And when you got there, just a, he goes, no, man, I want some bacon off of them. And if they're dead when they get there, you ain't going to get no bacon. Off. They'll treat them like a wild hog. So everything that was so important to him, all of a sudden, it ain't so important. Why? It was hard. It was rough. It was a rough road. How many of you ever been down a rough road? <laughs> Doing it your own way. I want it my way right away, the Burger King way. And now all of a sudden you find yourself on a road that you paved yourself. You paved it. We paved it. And now here we are on this road, and it is a rough road. We thought we had our priorities. We thought we had what we wanted. We were getting exactly what we wanted. But then we find out, it ain't what I want. Be careful what you wish for. The saying goes, because you just might get it all. And some things you don't want. So that's where he found himself. So he said, I said, what'd you do? He said, man, I picked up the phone and called him and said, I'm not going to make it today. I need another time slot. He said, we're going to a plan B. I don't know what plan B is, and, uh, but I, it, it may involve a phone call 
hey, father-in-law, <laughs> I need some help. I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, he ain't getting no bacon. If I have to go out there and help, I'm packing a nine mil on my hip, and we're going to get this done right quick and in a hurry. Amen. <laughs> He, he, wouldn't let it, he wouldn't let it happen. Paul says in Philippians 3, 8, I have discarded everything else. It wasn't taken from him. Nobody forced him to give it up. He himself said, I myself discarded everything. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing who? Christ Jesus. As what? my Lord. You know, there's a difference between knowing Christ Jesus and Him being your Lord. Amen. 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 So many, especially, I say especially those, I don't know, it could, it could go both ways, those raised in church, those that found church later, those that, it, it could go, those that don't go to church but think they know everything about church, y'all know them. And uh, uh, quote the Bible left and right, they say, and even and can, you know, a lot of head knowledge. They know about Christ, but they don't know Christ. It's a difference between knowing Christ Jesus. Paul goes to say, I, in the value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, my Lord, for his sake, for his sake, he discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. Isn't that beautiful? I have discarded everything else, counting it all garbage, so that I may have Christ. And another translation says, and become one with Him. Man, wow. <laughs> what got me thinking about that? I believe Paul didn't lose his passion. You know the passion that he had when he was Saul? Man, he was passionate passionate. Yeah. He even said earlier, as far as persecuting Christians, I was zealous. Yeah. I don't believe that when he came to know Christ as his Savior, he lost that zeal. I don't think he lost passion. Now, his, fo his focus changed. Matter of fact, Christ got him out of focus so that he could get in focus the right way. He met him on a road, didn't he? Changed his life forever. Changed his life forever. His focus changed. But the thing that made Paul Paul, his excitement, his tenacity, his willingness, his zeal, his passion, I think it still remained. I, I don't believe that, that he, he uh, took that. I believe that, uh, that uh, his love of the word, I don't believe he lost his love of the word when he, uh, he, when he believed on Jesus as the Son of God and received him as Savior. I believe he just refocused. He refocused from what I can do to earn my salvation to it's all about faith in Jesus Christ. Um, I'm, this, some of you may not know who this is. A couple of you may. Um, me and Callie were at, a, I forgot all about this. Me, Callie, and April, we were at a, a uh, it was a Gospel Music Association event, and we had gone up to, uh, we had gone up to Nashville. And we were at Belmont University, and, and uh, they were going to have uh, classes, one after another, after another, songwriting, music, all this kind of stuff. Anyway, we were at Belmont University, and we were coming down the stairs, and it was a spiral staircase coming into the student center there at, uh, at Belmont. And as we turned the corner, Callie and I were side by side. April was right behind us. She always wants us to go in front because she's scared to death. If she trips and falls, she, she thinks at least we'll break her fall. And, uh, and I always tell her, please don't pull me down with you. And uh, as, we were, as we were walking and we turned the corner, we looked down and there was, and, and I remember saying, no way. As soon as we turned the corner and I looked down, there was a man sitting on a couch right there all by himself in a corner. And I said, no way. And Callie said, that's Brian Head Welch. And some of you may not know who Brian, a bunch of you probably don't know who Brian Hill, Head Welch is. He's the lead guitarist and founding member for heavy rock band called Korn. And uh, so here he is, he's there. And I see him and I'm going, wow, there he is. There's Brian Head Welch. And we get down there. Brian, they call him Head, had just received Christ as his Savior about six months before that. He, matter of fact, he was part of that I Am Second movement. 
So Christ saved him uh, out of that, delivered him from drug addiction, alcoholism. He's now, he was a single dad raising his daughter Janae by himself. And here he was, this, this uh, rock star in a, a lot of youth's eyes. He was a little G God to them. He was a big deal. But you know, all of those things in life that he thought were such a big deal, partying and playing and doing all of these things, when it came to measuring his worth and his value versus the awesome value, the value of knowing Christ Jesus as his Lord, he considered all of those things worthless. And here he was sitting right there. <laughs> we got down there as quick as we could. I went down and introduced myself. I said, head? He said, yeah. I said, you don't know me. I don't know you. I said, I'm Sean. This is my daughter, Callie. She's a musician. And I just pushed her forward, and I just stepped back. They got to visit him about different things. But I remember him sharing his testimony. He said this. He said, when he came to know Christ as his Savior, he said, I backed out of that music industry. I got completely out of that heavy metal scene, completely. He said, what I started to do was play all of this soft, and this is, you know, his song. All this soft, frilly, kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. And he said, and I'm just not digging it, but it's Jesus. So I'm thinking that's what you're supposed to do. That's what they play in church. They play all them hymns, and I was doing all this. He said, and um, I was praying, and, and it just wasn't, it wasn't getting traction. It was like I was just spinning out. I mean, it just... But this is what I felt like the Lord wanted me to do. I thought this was what I was supposed to do. He said, I was praying one night, and God told me, man, I made you and called you for a purpose. Be who I made you and do what I gifted you to do. He says, so I started rocking for Jesus. I started doing the very thing that he called me to do. I started rocking for Jesus. Uh, the awesome thing about that was, with his rock and his edgy sound, all of those, he, what God ultimately told him was, I've called you to be a light in a dark place. That's right. So now he's taken the gospel of Jesus Christ into these dark places through the gift, talent, and ability. Now, I, don't, I, couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you one song that they sang. The only reason I even knew who he was in the first place was that Callie had read this book, I Am Second, and it was about Brian Head Welch, and she told me all about him. And I saw him on James Robinson giving his testimony. And he had his little daughter with him. And I'll never forget, she had her little bunny rabbit. You know, and I was like, man, that is so cool. Dude is dreadlocked, tatted up. I mean, just looks crazy. But he's drawing people to him. He's drawing youth to him. And when they come to him and they're looking up to him for, for what he was in the world, he's able to tell them about Jesus Christ. Amen. He's able to be a light in a dark place. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 9 says, I no longer count on me and become one with him, he says. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. I no longer count on my own righteousness. You know, man, if we're relying on our own righteousness, if we're relying on our own ability to quote Scripture, if we're relying on our own righteousness, man, I'm going to tell you what, we have bought into a lie that told us that we are in right standing with God because of what we can do. We're in right standing with God by what we can do for ourselves. It's a trick that the enemy will try to get you to buy into. That you're, and there are, I'm telling you, I bet you that there are tens of thousands of youth and young people and young adults who are buying, not just them, maybe even older ones who are buying into the lie that you are a God within yourself and you make your own destiny. <laughs> and there are, there are people who are buying into this, buying into this. Paul said he used to count on his own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on what? Faith faith. Y'all remember in verse 6, Paul said, I obeyed the Jewish law so, so uh, uh, faithfully that I was without fault. He obeyed the Jewish law 
so faithfully. Another translation said that he was never accused of any fault. Think about the dedication it took of knowing the word. Knowing the word. Not just knowing it. He memorized it. Not just knowing and memorizing it. He lived it. He lived it. And, and he followed the law. Every letter of the law. It's not like our law that we have today. Let's say there's a law that you must obey the speed limit. It's not like that. So now we know we have to obey the speed limit. And every mile or so, there's a reminder of what that speed limit is. Man, it's easy to obey when you get a reminder. Well, some of us is not very easy to obey <laughs> even with a reminder. That's why I got to take it in a speed zone, in a school zone rather. <laughs> Even though I tried to tell him that I didn't even realize I was in a school zone. You know what? He didn't care. <laughs> it was no flashing light. It was, anyway, it was right up the road. It was right here in Hallsville. That sucker buster wouldn't let me off. Then uh, I, I tried to argue one. Then I tried to sweet talk him. You know what? That didn't work either. <laughs> he thanked me for being kind. <laughs> yeah, but he still wrote me a ticket. And yeah. So it, sometimes our laws are simple to follow because we get reminders all the time. It wasn't like that. You know, in the Old Testament law, there were civil laws, there were ritual laws, and there were moral laws. Laws. Matter of fact, there were 613 of them. Yes. 613. Yes. He knew them. He memorized them. He lived them. In case there was one that he didn't know and slipped up and did, Someone might see him and accuse him of a fault. Paul was dedicated. I'm sorry, Saul was dedicated. Saul was zealous. Saul was passionate. I was so zealous, he said, that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, do you believe those two things are even in the same sentence? Do we still? That is the very definition of religion. One who will harshly persecute his brothers and sisters at the same time, feels like he's righteous. <laughs> Man, that's, a, that's religion at its finest right there. I obeyed the law without fault. The Jews thought this was the way to salvation. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, they thought this was the way to salvation. Galatians 3.11 so it's clear that no one can be made right with God by trying to keep the law. So it's clear that how many people? No one. How many? No. No one can be made right with who? God. By trying to keep what? The law. So if you're only trying to obey this law, period, period, no one can be made right with God. By trying to keep the law. For the scripture says, it is through what? Faith that a righteous person has life. Does it mean that we don't do what it says? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The, the point that Paul is trying to make right here is, if we only do this, if we only have works without faith, it's what? Dead. Dead. At the same time, faith without works is dead. dead. Matter of fact, it says dead, comma, and useless. But if you put the two together, if you mix your faith in Jesus Christ with the works in here in this word, not saying that we can earn our salvation by what we do, but we do because we have salvation. That's right. Now that we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, now we do. Now we do. Not because I have to, because I want to, Amen. because I want to. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's what Paul is trying to say. <laughs> if you're trying to be made right with God by keep by trying to by trying by trying to keep the law, for the Scripture says it's through faith that a righteous person has life. Matter of fact, that last part, it's through faith that a righteous person has life. That was taken from Habakkuk 2.4. Let's look at that one. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked. 
Oh, man, their lives are crooked. As soon as I saw that, I saw a crooked path in my mind. You know, when we're trusting in ourselves, when we're trusting in our way, ourselves, doing it our way, the way we want, when we want, how we want, our lives are a crooked path, a crooked path. But it's Christ and a relationship with Christ that makes our path straight. Amen. They trust in themselves. Their lives are crooked, but the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. This is Old Testament, folks. Yeah. This is Old Testament. Even then, it wasn't just about obeying the law and living out the law. It was about faithfulness to God. Another translation says, but the righteous will live by faith. By faith. Let's go to Philippians, back to Philippians 3, 9. It says, I no longer count on my own goodness or my ability to obey God's law, but I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Verse 10. As a result, as a result, another translation says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Unbelievable. Uh, matter of fact, there's a, uh, a, this, uh, another translation. It says, I can really know Christ. I can really know Christ. Here it says, I want to know Christ and experience. I can't tell you how many people I come across, and you all probably do too, that it, even when they come up for prayer or I see them or, or, or we're visiting, wherever it is, and they say, you know, preacher, man, I just, man, I just want to know, I just want to know Jesus better. I just want to know Christ better. Any of you want to know Christ better? I want to know Jesus better. I want to know Christ better. <laughs> it all has to do with His Word. It all has to do with His Word. Getting in His Word, studying His Word. If you want to know Jesus better, get in His Word. Get in his word. Paul said, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ better too. I want to know him better and better. To do that, we have to get in his word, to stay in his word. That's where we learn the character and the nature of the one that we follow. When we're praying, when we're seeking him, then we come to know him better and better. Paul said it himself, and I hope you caught it. It said, God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. <laughs> I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Romans 10, 17 says, just to back it up, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want more faith. The disciples even asked Jesus one time, they said, you know, Messiah, teacher, Lord, Jesus, I want more faith. How do we get more faith? And then he described faith as a mustard seed. Faith as a mustard seed. It has to be planted. It wasn't necessarily talking about the size of the faith. When you look at what do you do with a seed? Anybody ever plant seeds? You take that seed, that faith, that word, Another, another part of the scripture says that the word is the seed. You take that seed. If you want more faith, faith is like a mustard seed. You plant it. When you plant a seed, it, it grows up into a harvest. When we plant this word into a heart that's ready to receive the word, and then we begin to do what it says, it produces a harvest in our lives. Does that make sense? That's when we know Christ more and more through his word, through a relationship with him. As a result, I can really know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I can learn what it means to suffer with him, sharing in his death, death so that somehow I can experience the resurrection from the dead. We're going to stop there. I'll probably end up picking it up right where we left off. Let's pray out. Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we had to, to break the bread, Lord, to share, to share this word. And Father, to, uh, to, to, 
to see in your life, in, uh, in the life of Paul, God, just to see the, the, the transition from Saul to Paul and what was so important to Saul wasn't so important with Paul. Matter of fact, wasn't important at all. He, he, he counted it as garbage. He counted it as dung, another translation. God, so that he could win you, so that he can be one with you. Father, that, <laughs> that just spurs me on. That just encourages me. And God, I know that, uh, that um, in this word is where we gain uh, more and more faith. And when we gain more and more faith, we, we come to know you more and more. We come to, to have that closer walk with you, that better relationship with you, especially when we begin to stand on your word and, and, to, uh, and to not just be hearers of the word or readers of the word, but to be doers of the word. God, I just thank you and I praise you for what you've done in our lives. I thank you, Father, for, for what you continue to do. I thank you, Father, that you're not content with allowing us to just uh, be status, be static. But God, you are, you are growing us and you are challenging us and you are giving us opportunities that seem bigger than us so that we'll draw on you, Lord, to help us to, accompl- help us to accomplish the things that you want us to do. God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just thought, uh, you know, I just thought as, as, uh, as we're getting ready to go, I was reminded, you know, my, my brother-in-law, Will, he, uh, man, he, man, dude, he was on the path of success. He, he was EMT at Seminole. Man, he was on the truck. He was doing good. Matter of fact, he had worked himself up into a position where he had gotten a promotion, and he was a supervisor, uh, supervisor for a, for a, uh, uh, and I may get this wrong, but EMT service in Lubbock, Texas. So he was supervisor. Man, he had worked himself up into a really good position. Man, that was so important. It was so important to him. They were exci- I was excited for him. His wife, my sister was excited for him. The kids were excited for him, and that was so important. The value of that was awesome. And then one day, I mean, young age, he has a stroke. He has a stroke. And I went to, I remember going to the hospital and visiting with him uh, in Dallas. What seemed so important at the time now wasn't so important. The main thing was overcoming the situation that he was in at that moment. You know, so many times in life, the things that seem so important to us, man, and it's, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not knocking it at all. The way God blesses us, man, and we're on that high, and we're riding that, that Holy Ghost high. We're riding that Jesus high. It just seems like God is blessing everything that we do and everything that we touch. God is blessing it and blessing our business and blessing our path and blessing our family blessing our kids, and man, it's just awesome, and this is, this is important, and then all of a sudden, you have a setback to the point that you have a, a broken home, you have a troubled marriage, you have a stroke, you have COVID, you get put on life support, you, you get intubated, you know, all of these things, it seems to shift, now all of a sudden, it's about, it's about surviving, it's about surviving this, and all of the while, God never left Will. God never left him. God never leaves us when we find ourselves in those spots in life. He was with us through the good times. And you say, where are you, God, now that times aren't good? Where are you in my walk with you? He's in the same place he was when times were good. He's right with you, walking with you all the way through so that when he brings you out, You'll have a testimony to be able to help somebody else who's going through the same thing. Only they don't have a Jesus they can depend on. They don't have someone that can come and pray for them. They don't have anyone that will check on them. Anyone who will understand or relate to what they're going through. He overcame that. Man, we prayed. We were lifting Will up, checking on him, sending him Jesus Collins. And God started to do some awesome things in his life. He started getting his memory back. He started getting skills back. He started being able to do a lot of the things that he wasn't able to do because of the stroke. And then uh, he tested, and he's got his EMT certification, and he's back on a truck serving as an EMT. I mean, God, God is absolutely fantastically wonderful, fantastically wonderful. So, uh, and then the cool thing was, uh, I mean, if there's a, a bright, a bright, uh, silver lining to come out of all this COVID stuff. Thinking back, one month before COVID hit, we were able to go live on Facebook. 
We were trying it out. We had all the equipment and everything we needed and the people in place to make that happen one month. We didn't know. Who knew that, that, that our whole lives were going to change in March? We were set up. Uh, Will and Rochelle started watching. Uh, started watching through all of that. Matter of fact, it was when Callie and Clint were singing recently, so it wasn't even then. Callie and Clint were singing recently, and they started watching. They've been watching every Sunday and every Wednesday since. There were several who were doing the same. They're growing in their relationship with the Lord because of Trails in Cowboy Church. And not just, uh, not just us, it's what Christ is doing in us, through us, with us, and we are who we are as a body of Christ because of Christ. And, uh, and, and it, was, it was so cool, you know, to get a text saying, I mean, we are growing in our relationship with the Lord, even though they can't be here. And, and uh, they said, you know, we, we hope to be there. One, this is their church home. And they said, but they've never been here. <laughs> they've only seen first row and this. And they said, you think about it. <laughs> and they said, you know, we can't wait till we come for a visit. And we actually get to come to Trails in Cowboy Church, Harrison County. Man. This is their home. And uh, this is what, that's just what Christ is doing, all, you know, all the way in Lubbock, Texas. So uh, I've just thought about them, thought about Will and the transition and the way God brought him from where he was to where he is. And, and, and I know that because every, just about every single, he, everybody here had a prayer request of something. We all know so many who are going through so much. And so many here are going through so much. I want to encourage you. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. The same God that was with you in the good times is the same God that is with you now. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Don't leave him either. Don't leave him either. He's in the driver's seat driving. How many? Man, I know I need to shut up. But it, 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 if, if someone is driving the vehicle and they are going 50 miles an hour, no one opens the door and jumps out. God is your pilot, and he is moving forward. Except probably Chris. He's laughing, so he must have done it. I'm not going there. And uh, he's driving. The worst thing that could happen is you open the door and you bail out on God. <laughs> Even if you bail out on God, guess what? He's still there. He's still there. He's still there. He's still with you wherever you go. And I'm so glad he is. Man, I feel like I've done preach two messages. I almost prayed out again. <laughs> God bless you. Y'all have a great rest of the week.